Hi there, I'm in a company called Happy. Uh, just, just, just quick, take it. anybody heard of Happy? Oh, a few, a few, okay. We're a small training company, um, but we have received quite a wide recognition. In 2003, Management Today said we were the very best company in the UK for customer service. Last year, the Financial Times rated us the second best workplace in the UK. So what I'm going to talk about now is how you create a great place to work, both from my own experience and from all the other people we've met in, uh, in those competitions and learning the lessons from some of the best places to work in the UK. But I'm going to get you to do some work too, because I would like to get people involved and draw their own conclusions. So I want you to turn to your neighbour, I want you to agree with them. Now that's not fair! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want you to turn to your neighbour and agree and decide with them uh, three key elements of management, of good management. Okay? You have all of 30 seconds. Three key elements of good management. <laughs> okay. Let me make a quick feel. How many said communication? Hands up. How many said decision making? Uh, no. Consistency? Listening? What else? Any others? Vision and leadership. How many said that? Okay. How many said giving people trust and freedom? A few, a few. Okay. Um, second exercise, I want you to think about when you worked at your best. Okay, again, with your neighbour, 30 seconds again, a real example of when you worked at your best. Okay. First question is, for how many of you was it when you were closely managed and told what to do? Anyone? No? All oh, right. Okay, for how many was the main characteristic good communication? Or a really important one? Okay. Um, vision and leadership, a main characteristic. Okay, for how many was a key characteristic being trusted and given the freedom to do it your way? Just about everyone, yeah? Okay, now I, think, I find that interesting because I always get a very similar result there. I've asked the same question two different ways, haven't I? What makes great management is surely what enables people to work at their best. Now one or two of you did, uh, there was a handful that did say trust for that first question, but most people focus on other stuff like vision, communication, listening, these kinds of things. Now the earlier speaker referred to Maslow, and I think it's similar to Maslow because you'll be sitting thinking, well those things are necessary. And they are. Communication, things like that. But they're like, in a management hierarchy of needs, they're the bottom. The necessary but not sufficient. What actually enables people to work at their best is being challenged and giving them the trust and freedom to do things their way. And whenever I ask that question of people, 90% come up with examples which are like that. Because for me, great management is about getting out of the way. Yeah, I'll give, let me give you one of my favourite stories. A guy called Tom Tribone was put in charge at the age of 24 of a latex company in Pittsburgh. After a few months, he noticed that the productivity on the day shift was half the level of the weekend shift. What was the difference between the two shifts? Yeah, there was no managers there. It wasn't, uh, there was no managers there on the weekend shift. And what Tom was doing was, uh, all day was trying to be very helpful, seeing if he could, you know, can I help you with this? Maybe we can talk about this. He was getting in people's way, yeah? And what he did, to his credit, was he got out of the way. He made sure they had a direct link with the customer, so they knew what to produce, 
but he stepped back and he actually managed to get productivity on the day shift up to the same level as the weekend shift. Now let me give you a practical example of this that you can use. How many of you set up a group to solve a problem, come up with an idea, or in some way come up with a new, a new thing, a new process? How many of you set people up to do that? Okay, how would it be if next time you do it, you say to them, your solution is pre-approved? Whatever you come up with, I won't try to improve it. Maybe I won't even read it. Okay? It's pre-approved from the start. Any thoughts what would happen? Does somebody shake in their head? Anybody? Yeah. Would, they be, would they take it more seriously? Yeah? Would they be more likely to make work whatever solution they came up with? Okay. Now, there's a caveat. You have to actually let them know the parameters. You have to let them know the budget, all the secret things in your head, the people they have to clear things with. But it's about getting out of the way and giving people the freedom to come up with their own solutions. Let me try another principle on you. Um, at Happy, the core principle is people work best when they feel good about themselves. Okay. How many people would agree with that? Hands up. People work best when they feel good about themselves. Okay. First, everybody agrees. What then is the key role of management? Make people feel happy. Yeah, make people feel good about themselves, feel valued. How many of you work in organisations where that is the key role of management? Okay, some of you, good, but a small minority. Now this might sound a bit fluffy, so I'm going to give you a concrete example. How many of you know Nando's, the chicken restaurant, yeah? They did an interesting piece of research. They wanted to know why some branches were growing faster than others. <laughs> So they looked at all the factors, location, footfall, everything like that, and they found that one thing was more important than the others in determining whether a branch grew. Any guesses what it is? It was how good people felt in the annual staff survey. So they changed their entire bonus structure. Although what they wanted was sales growth, they realised that they had to target something else. So half of managers' bonuses at Nando's is now on how happy and satisfied staff are in the annual survey. Not because they just want people, you know, for fluffy reasons, but for hard financial reasons. So, quick, another chat with your neighbour. How would your organisation be different if the main focus of management was making people feel good and valued? 30 seconds. Okay, any thoughts? Any thoughts? Well, how would it be different? They'd do more, and if they did more, you'd make more money. They'd do more, and you'd make more money. Anything else? Happier customers, very important. Anything else? Staff turnover down, yeah? I can tell you that Happy has one of the lowest staff turnovers in our industry. And you know what the main problem for, small, for most businesses, certainly small businesses in London, is recruitment. We have 2,000 people waiting to join. To recruit, we don't place any ads, we send one email. Okay? And then the reality is that the companies that can top a, that do best in the best places to work are also, they've been indexed, they're the ones that do best in, in, the, uh, in terms of share price. So what I want to encourage you to do is think about how can you create a great place to work? What I'd love to tell you about also, you know, next time maybe, is uh, how to create a no-blame culture. Why, why most recruitment processes recruit the wrong people and what to do about it, and how you can change your whole management structure so it supports people not working against them. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you.